What's up everyone, it's Kastava, back in action. New videos like I promised now that my SE travels, hopefully, are done. But now I wanna take a minute to talk about the SE exam itself. Um, not particularly about the statistics behind it or how to study for it or anything like that, but I think a much more important topic and that's the, the feelings around the SE exam itself. Feelings that come uh, from within our profession from both people who have their SE as well as from people who do not have their SE. And then at the end, I will give a brief synopsis of how exam day went for me, my feelings, um, a crazy calculator story, again, for all of you, believe it or not, um, if you know, you know from my FE uh, past experiences. So stick around, there's gonna be some good info in here that I think is just a great talking point in general that isn't talked about a lot in our industry. Let's get into it. Let's start with people who have not taken or have not yet passed the SE exam and the feelings that I think um, most of us feel. I consider myself in this category because I myself have only passed the gravity portion of the exam, the lateral portion withstanding. What is this? Fingers crossed that I passed it. And the feeling that I have felt leading up to deciding to take the SE, as well as talking with you know, others in the industry about it is mostly fear. Um, fear was that big wall that I felt at a point in my career where, you know, the switch kind of clicked on and said, hey, I think I have enough experience now in the industry where I think it's my turn to give the SE exam a, you know, a, a fair shot. And the heart started racing a little bit. My mind started racing of, oh my gosh, you know, uh, this is such a huge undertaking. Um, I'm scared. And now that I've gone through this, I'm asking myself why I originally felt like that. Because I no longer do feel like that, even without having uh, the SE title yet. And that, I thought about it a lot, and I think it comes down to a place of realizing that the SE, just like the PE, uh, just like the FE back when you were in college or university, is a huge milestone and benchmark that tests you. I know it's a test, I get it. I'm not trying to play on words here. But I mean, tests you as an engineer um, and highlights where you're at in your career to date. Um, and it's, it's a metric that can be used to measure you against everybody else in the industry. And that is a really, really scary thing. Before we could be, like I said, I'll use myself as an example, but a potentially pretty crafty engineer um, at least within my own head or, or through, uh, you know, feedback from peers and bosses and say, you're doing a really great job. No, you, you know, we really like you here. But what the SE does is call you out and say, all right, we are going to test to see how good of an engineer you really are. And the feeling of that fear comes if you do fail, which I have. I failed the gravity portion the first time I took it. Initially, deep down, I thought, well, others are gonna see me, I'm, I'm exposed. I'm really not that great of an engineer. There's so much more I need to learn. It does everyone around me in my industry think I'm lesser because of this result. And that is something that I just wanted to bring out and say, say out loud that I think a lot of us put up this really scary barrier thinking that that's going to be the case. But unless you have crappy coworkers or just evil people surrounding you in your life, I found that after the worst result came true for me, that it was the complete opposite. Uh, everyone was very supportive. All they could give me was great feedback and you know, gave me props for at least trying. Um, those who had the SE, who are all of my mentors, you know, they, they didn't dwell on any fact that I didn't get the job done, only that I am going to get it done. And that's how I felt as well. Um, after I had put myself out there and had gone, gone through all that studying, and then taken, you know, the grueling first eight hour exam, I realized that fear was the last thing I was thinking through all of that. It was just preparation and hard work and dedication and honing my skills. And a part of that was really exhausting and um, a part of it was really exhilarating because I was noticeably seeing how much of a better engineer I was becoming during this process. And I think that's obviously the main goal of the test overall is to elevate you at the great engineer that you are right now up to this new status of engineer that 
says, yeah, you can take on so much more, you can think so much more critically, and you can design so much better and greater things. One thing that I've noticed personally is that by getting tossed into this whole SE process, how much more confidence I have accumulated as an engineer. It doesn't mean that that necessarily means I'm a better engineer, but just how much more easy it is to get involved with more advanced topics in structural engineering. I no longer fret about, oh, am I good enough to understand this advanced concept? It opened up the simplicity in a way of a lot of the structural engineering concepts that we use um, across the board within our industry. Not everything is this crazy advanced system that has to be complex just to be complex. It's actually the complete opposite. Most of the concepts that we use were founded on simple principles, because as we all know, if you can prove that something works simply, then the later details can all be ironed out. So whether you are or are not at that point in your career where you think you should take the SE, or that you're too old to take the SE, or you're too young to take the SE, or you're, you don't do calculations anymore, and therefore the SE's not for you, know that it is for you. It is for you, it's meant for you, and through, through the struggle, uh, you will only benefit from it, whether you pass or you fail. Next, let's jump over and talk about those who have passed the test and have their SE license. Now, this is a group of people that I am only drawing upon from my own observation because I am not one of them yet. I'm halfway there, I'm this hybrid little weird, weird thing. There is this feeling that I get occasionally with individuals who are SEs that hold potentially non-SE engineers to a lower standard. And I get that on paper and through titles, yes, we are of a lower standard. But any really great engineer and any of the great structural engineers that I know don't act like that. Um, they only lift up others through example and through their hardships and then give really great mentorship as to how to overcome those hardships that they faced. But every once in a while, there are there are engineers with this title that kind of gatekeep, I think, in my opinion, where they say, well, well, I did it, so that means I'm the best, and unless you have the same title that I have, I sort of don't even want to take into account the things that you're bringing to the table. It's, it's just a feeling that I get sometimes. And hopefully, I am absolutely wrong on all fronts on that. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'm trying to keep this an interesting topic that I don't think is talked about all that often. But one way that I know I will definitely prove myself wrong is as more people become structural engineers or PEs, this applies to just as much of those who have a PE license versus those who do not have a PE license. Treat people that aren't at your status with the same level of respect, obviously, um, from an academic standpoint. And if they are slow to certain concepts that you find really simple, um, that doesn't mean that they don't understand those concepts. It just means that, hey, we got they gotta get built up a little bit here because they didn't go through what you have gone through yet, which could be for a variety of different reasons. Life reasons, yeah, pretty much life reasons. And there's an infinite amount of reasons to everyone's life. So just consider that. But here's the thing. I wanna dive a little bit deeper into this potential feeling of superiority. Where does it come from? Um, it may be the individual or is it something else? Is it the test specifically? And I think it's partially the latter portion of that. I think the test creates this type of superiority because it is so difficult and because engineers who go through this process have to sacrifice so much um, that when they are through it, they have this extreme um, feeling of accomplishment, which you should, which you obviously should. What that can bring, I feel like, is just sometimes a, I guess a mindset of like, well, if I had to go through it, then that means you have to go through it. Like if I suffered, that means you have to suffer too. And only after you suffer, does that mean that I feel that I can accept you as an engineer type of thing, if that makes sense. 
Don't look at others and say, I did it, so that means you have to do it, and I'll be waiting here for you when you get it done. Help them. Help them in any way that, that you can. And I think together that would encourage more people to take it, um, to advance, to and, and from that just better our industry. Now let's switch over to my experiences on exam day as well as my heart attack calculator story. You're gonna notice that we're gonna switch to daytime and that's because my camera's on the fritz. But don't fret, let's get into it. I think what a lot of people might not consider is that people taking the SE exam, um, the that the morning is like a breeze and it's really the afternoon that everyone's scared of. Uh, for those of you not familiar, the morning is multiple choice, 40 of them, and then the afternoon is four open response uh, engineering questions, so you, you design stuff. Um, this is obviously going to change with now shifting to the computer-based format for the SE exam, but we're not talking about that today. I took paper-based, um, but <laughs> from the uh, from the feelings of others, from uh, this is now the third test that I took. I took gravity twice, and this is my first time and hopefully only time taking the lateral portion of the exam. Is that the morning is really really difficult? Like it's something that in all three exams, everyone was more nervous, thinking that they failed because of the morning rather than the afternoon, which is which is interesting because before I started studying and going down this SE journey, I thought the same thing. I thought, oh, these guys, like, ah, if I could just take the multiple choice, that's that's the part where I feel comfortable because there's answers there and it can't be that hard and it's six minutes per problem. It's the same type of allotted average time that the PE is. But man, oh man, uh, they can ask you some pretty gnarly stuff in those six minutes and you gotta be sharp in order to get them uh, solved. Uh, most of the time you run out of time and you have maybe like two, three or four left over, sometimes more, and you have to guess. That's a very common thing that pops up for test takers. There's some out there that's not, and there's some out there that they only made it halfway through. We're talking about my experiences and on average what overall the feeling of, of the test takers when, when I was taking it. Uh, but I made it through. I was actually really happy that this was the first time that I got through all 40 problems and had a little bit of time left over where I could go back, take a breath and say, okay, this one I sort of, you know, whittled it down to two correct answers and two that were clearly not correct. Let me spend another two, three, four minutes seeing if I can dial this in. Does it mean that I passed? Does it mean that I felt good about answers that were wrong? Yeah, all the above to all of that. You know, you never know until you know. Fast forward, we go to the afternoon. Uh, there were concepts in my studies that I couldn't fully get to because I ran out of time in my study sessions. So I had to roll the dice a little bit and say, all right, what thing do I, do I not think they're necessarily going to be asking for? And what are some of the main drivers that, or main design elements that I think they may be asking for? Because that's something that a lot of people consider in their study prep, is not studying everything because there is so much and determining what you might need to study and what they may ask. Um, because they can only ask four questions in the afternoon for the paper-based. And so if you study the four things that they ask in the afternoon, and nothing else, you you pass the test. Congratulations. Um, whereas you could study 95, 96 other things that make you an incredible engineer, but you didn't study the four things that they asked, and so you fail the exam. So it is a it is a slight game we have to play when determining what to study, how much to study of it, um, and how much we need to be prepared to recall for the afternoon. Um, overall, I felt comfortable with most things. There was one problem I think that tripped me up uh, eh, a little bit. It was more open-ended. I can't talk about what the problems were, obviously. We all, we all know that. Um, but it was more open-ended is all I'll say. And so you don't necessarily know. Did I provide enough information? Did I not provide enough information? Is it what the grader was looking for when they made this problem? Is it, is it not? Um, so, you know, uh, I tried my best. I tried to 
talk through all my thoughts and processes, but we shall see if it was enough. Um, and <laughs> if you've made it here to the end, I will say that uh, uh, I did have a little snafu, um, just like I did if you've ever watched my um, failing the FE um, video. It's uh, I'll link it like down below or up top or somewhere in here in the video. But um, it's one of my more popular videos and, and the chaos of me forgetting my calculator. I didn't forget the calculator, so hold up. But it was something to do with my calculator. Uh, when I came in in the morning, it actually, or when I woke up at the hotel in the morning, it surprisingly had dropped to below freezing for the first time like that year. And I left my books and my calculators in my car. Uh, so I get to the test taking site and that doesn't dawn on me until I'm standing outside waiting to be let in and I just realize how, how cold it is. Um, and when I get inside, I open my calculators and try to turn them on. One turns on, another one does not turn on. It had froze, so it had, it had like shorted out to some degree. And of course I'm freaking panicking over here. So I'm like, it's all, the, the prophecy has been foretold. It's all coming back. The calculator is going to strike me down. And now what if this calculator doesn't have enough battery or it dies on me, you know, I'm done. And it's funny because when we work every single day, eight hours a day, if not more, and we're using that calculator 24 seven, we never think of it. It always turns on, it always works. Eventually after years, it gets low battery potentially and you gotta switch it. But um, it just so happens I was down to one calculator and I was like, what if it doesn't work? What if I'm done? And that's just it, that's it for me. Um, and you know, those thoughts of anxiety crept in a little bit that I talked about earlier in the video. You know, oh, is it is it meant to me that I'm not supposed to be an SE or, you know, uh, it's gonna it's gonna take me several attempts to pass this thing. Oh, if and what 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 you know. <sighs> but thankfully, I started the exam, and I realized that I could uh, I could clear my calculator. Like you can you can f do a force reset pretty much by holding I think like three buttons, and it turned back on. So we were back in action. We were at full dual calculators back in it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out that. You know, it wouldn't be a, a Kestiva test taking experience unless I had some type of calculator snafu um, for all of you. We'll see in a couple weeks time how it the test ended up for me, whether good or bad. I've just always been very happy that I've had all of you, all of the team here with me, studying alongside of me of whatever you are studying. I know we had a couple other SE uh, studiers in the chat uh, during my studies. So we're all in this together. And ultimately that's the crew that you know, I want to cultivate for our structural engineering community in general. We should all be trying, like I said, to lift ourselves up, not step over one another to, to obtain a higher status as an engineer. So think about that. Um, think about kind of the things that I outlined here, my thoughts, my feelings, and let me know in the comments if you felt anything similar, if you think I've missed a major topic that isn't talked a lot about in the engineering industry um, and things that we can improve on. But this is Rich with Team Kesteva. Glad to be back making more videos and we're gonna stop, you know, chit-chatting and talking. I am now moving forward, getting back into those practice problems, in-depth structural engineering problems that we all like and see in the professional engineering field. So stay tuned and I'll catch you. Peace.